You are listening to the Funnel Amplified podcast, where we talk about your growth intensification through social expansion, content amplification, brand magnification, lead generation, conversion optimization, and pipeline acceleration. If you enjoy the show, please write and post your podcast review today. Now let's talk about growing your business. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am so glad you're here today. I am excited for today's episode. Uh, I'm going to jump right into it because I have today with me Mr. Larry Levine, who is the author of Selling from the Heart. You've probably seen his uh, his book being talked about all over the place. And he is also the co-host of the podcast, Selling from the Heart. So, I am going to welcome him here, and he's going to share a ton with you from his book today. Larry, are you there? And welcome to Funnel Amplified. Brandon, it's awesome. It's always good to talk to you, and I can't wait to dive in. I can't. I, I'm so excited, Larry. You and I have had a lot of conversations that we have not recorded. Um, <laughs> We've talked a lot about this, like, hey, I mean, sales is sales. It's a human to human connection. We're living in this digital era. And, you know, there's some people we think are doing it really well. And there's some things that you and I have talked about without naming any names that we go, man, you know, that just misses the human mark. And I want to hear you share all about it today. Does that sound good? Uh, do I can't. We got to get rolling on this because uh, you and I, Brandon, you and I can talk for days on this because we already have. <laughs> that is true. Well, hey, uh, I'm assuming that one episode is going to turn into two or three or more. So let's uh, let's jump in. And what I want to do is, first of all, say congratulations on the success of your book. No, thank and, you. I appreciate it. Yeah. And uh, I bought it and have read it when it first came out and knowing you, it was just such a pleasure to go through it, but let's jump in and talk with everybody about, before we get into the positive, let's talk a little bit about the negative. And and I love the term that you use. You, you, you use the term empty suit. Um, Tell us what you mean by that and, and how it's affecting negatively sales. Oh, wow. You you know, and and first of all, I I just want to share that, you know, the reason why I came up with Empty Suit and really stress it is I'm not trying to disrespect, you know, the sales profession by no means, Brandon. I'm not trying to ruffle feathers and all that. I'm really, I want salespeople out there, sales leaders all across the world to really realize that we can all do better. And, you know, the term Empty Suit just means, you know, you're there, but you're not there. And, and where I'm going with this is it, the all about me, the all about how great I am has to stop. And it, it's just, it, it's too sad that we all get puffed up in the sales world in our own aura. If you get what I'm throwing at you, we, we're, we're so, we're so consumed with ourself. We're, you know, we put on this facade. And, and I think in this day and age, people can smell it a mile away. People can, and I always say this, people can smell sincerity the minute you walk in the door or you speak to them, but they can smell insincerity just as quickly. And there's so much insincerity going on in sales right now because we're all puffed up in our own, this is how great I am, that we forget at the end of this, it's a human speaking to another human. And that's where I just came up with the whole term empty suit so to drive the point across. Yeah, you're there, but is people, are people really listening to you? Do they really care about what you're saying? Because you're so consumed in yourself and you're putting on an act. And I talk about it throughout my book, Sound from the Heart, as you know, a sales facade and misalignment and so forth, is there's so many people out there that are putting on an act that it, it's hard to balance, right? It, it, it's hard. Are you? Is this the real you, right? Or is this the fake you? Who are you? Thus the empty suit. Give us us an example. Give us something tangible. I know you have stories throughout your book. Uh, You know, peel that one back a little bit. So just so I understand where you're driving with this. What does it mean? How to give us, give us something tangible, a story of what it, what an example of somebody that shows up as an empty suit and how that influences their online relationships or their offline relationships or both. Well, okay. So, I mean, can I get, I'll, I'll give you a real life story and I'll pick on myself if, if, 
yeah. and and this is where I really caught on to this. So I'm going to, I'm going to go back maybe 25 years ago and I'm an open book brand and you know that we've had some pretty good heart to heart conversations. Yeah. And, and so I, I don't mind. I mean, I wear the big V of vulnerability and I'm absolutely transparent. So I'll share with you. This is, this is where I really caught on to this is I got schooled by a chief financial officer about 25 years ago. And I had walked in, so I grew up in the office technology world. So I had uh, set, you know, my first in meeting, my very first appointment with this chief financial officer. Obviously, they were he was in the mode where they wanted to replace some of the technology inside their office. So I was the third sales rep in. And I started sharing what I thought was a great meeting, great conversation and so forth. And the guy just said, hey, you know what, Larry, I'm going to stop you dead in your tracks. He said, because you've walked. You're walking, talking, and acting like the other few salespeople that have walked in. You're, it's all about you, right? It's all about your company. It's all about how great you are. And you've done nothing, absolutely nothing, in terms of building any kind of a sincere relationship with me because you haven't asked about me, my concerns, the issues that I might be having going on inside my company, and I got exposed. Yeah. So... Do me this favor, extend that to today's day and age. Anything you see today, this morning, you and I were talking about it a little bit, obviously don't use names, but um, what does that look like in this digital era? Uh, You know, I think it's even worse, Brandon, for one simple reason is I think people hide behind the keyboard and they hide behind their screen and they portray themselves a lot larger than they think than, than they are. When I say a lot larger, they, they're positioning themselves as this sales professional or as this, you know, sales leader, or as this sales guru. And, but when you peel it back, there's nothing there. They're hiding behind the screen. And, yep. and and then I said, cool. you know, and and it was and it was interesting because I learned this a long time ago. If you walk and talk a certain way, and if you stay true to who you are, and you genuinely care about your clients, and you care about the prospects, and you have their best interests at heart, and you're doing that face to face, right out in the field, outbound ways, and so forth, the traditional ways that I grown up with, then if you portray yourself the exact same way online. People sense that, and thus that that's why I've 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 gotten so much engagement online is because there's no difference. There is absolutely zero difference between the way I act face to face and the way I act online, with only one difference. And that different and that difference is is I won't swear online. <laughs> right. I, I, I mean. Or when we're, or when recording. we're recording, I promise I won't say any naughty words, but it, it, it's just, you know, but I think you understand where I'm coming from is, is this day and age with digital. And I always say, you know, we live in a digitally driven business world. We're socially empowered. We're highly connected. There's networks all over the place. But if you really want to have success leveraging this, become the best version of yourself and walk, talk, and act like a normal human being face-to-face and online and create absolutely zero difference with it. And you'll be light years ahead of all the other sales schmucks that are out there. That's good stuff. Now, Larry, let's, let's assume that somebody's listening right now and they're saying, gosh, Larry, I agree with that. But how do I do that? What does that look like for me practically? Could you share um, that? Sure. You know, and, and it's interesting because uh, it's hard, right? It, it's hard for, for salespeople to really understand, you know, really how to position themselves online. And I think you'd agree, right, Brandon? Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's tough. So I said, hey, listen. And, and, when I work, and when I work with salespeople, I mean, I challenge them. Because we all we all can articulate value, we can all tell a story. It's just how well we do it. And I think the biggest missing link with how do I bridge offline to online in terms of how to position myself as a sales rep is nobody's coaching sales reps on how to market themselves. No one's coaching them on how to how to position themselves really well. They're just saying, you know what, you know, hey Brandon, just make sure you got a great profile and just make sure it looks good. Okay, well, fine. So Brandon does what he thinks he does and. He just positions himself as nothing more than everybody else that's out there that's a sales rep. 
So I said, you know what? It, it, that's, let's take a step back and understand you, right? And I talk about it in the first couple chapters of my book. Become self-aware with who you are, self-reflect, and really understand the value that you bring. And I and I urge people just to just to ask themselves, you know, what is it that I'm really good at? And start expanding on it. Start start getting with, you know, your centers of influence and your friends and your other coworkers and ask them to describe you and start positioning yourself in a different way. Yeah. Now, what about that? That's really good stuff. Thank you for that. Now, what about the next step? It's it's about you. It's describing you from an authentic place. But what about how they position themselves to be connectable, relatable to their prospects, their best potential customers? Yeah, it's, um, I'll go back. I had a, I had a guest. I, the best way to answer is I had a guest on our podcast. This goes back about three months ago. And he talked about mm-hmm. the law of attraction, Brandon. And I thought was and I thought was really yeah. cool in the age that we're at right now, right now, which is highly digital. So if you're not positioned really well online, if you if if you don't look like a sales professional, if you're if you if you're not driving just true, genuine, great content that is leading with insight, that's being educational in nature. No one's going to want to spend any time with you. So this is where he calls the law of attraction. He goes, you know what? He goes, he'll use a, he used a baseball term. And I think it's with baseball season, just right, right around the corner. This is a great time to bring it up. He goes, most salespeople aren't getting out of the batter's box online. They're, they're, they're stuck at they're they're, you know, they got both feet in the batter's box and they're frozen right there because there's so much noise out there. No, do this. No, do that. No, do this right? They're listening to all this stuff that they're stuck at home plate. They're in the batter's box. He goes, if you can position yourself as a normal human being online, where you're telling your story, you're articulating your value, you're driving insight, you're leading with education, you're engaging online, every single day you're leading off with a double. That's really good. Yeah, it reminds me of um, one of our previous uh, episodes. I was speaking with uh, Sherelle Brown from uh-huh. SAP, and we talked a lot. About, yeah, we talked a lot about why are salespeople so scared to create content or have an opinion or post something socially, and we talked about why is anybody scared to do it, and it's because normally um, we're a little uncertain and we're worried that the negative Nellies are going to be the first ones that show up. And what I always tell people is, Hey, guess what? They are the first ones to show up. They will show up, just expect it and move on. Because if they're negative about what you're posting, they're not. No, your audience and, anyway. uh, and you bring up such a great point. I think it's fear and ego, but I remember back, this is probably, so we're, you know, 2019. So this probably goes back like 2011 say 2010, 11, and 12, I didn't know, Brandon, what generating content meant. I had no clue, right? Mm-hmm. I was that I, I was that salesperson, <laughs> you know, today, you know, what, what do y'all talk about? But what I found out is I love to learn and I love to read. So what I started doing online that helped me is I started reading stuff online that my clients and prospects were reading. And I just serve that back up online. So. Yeah, flush that out. So again, I want to come back to the person listening to this going, okay, that sounds good. But how do I do that? Like how practical, what are the practical steps for somebody to do that? I mean, it, it, it's simple. It's, it's just like, I'm not a fi- I hate fishing, right? I just hate it. I can't stand it. I don't, I don't like putting worms on hook and, and dangling stuff out there to get a nibble, right? And spending all day and nothing happens. I'm just not a fisherman at all, period. But I equate, I equate that to what sales reps do with social. We're just fishing. We're fishing for conversations. And what I mean by that is I started to leverage and I encourage salespeople to leverage content online and it could just be it could be business related right it could be uh community service related it could be uh 
motivational. There's all kinds of content out there, Brandon, that sales reps can use. But the nice thing is that, that I did, and I encourage people to do this, is again, it goes back to reading and we live in a digital world. Why not start serving up that content that gets people going, hey, you know what? Larry drives great content. Brandon drives great content. I and I love engaging on it. I remember back, I used to have clients and prospects because I was proactive with this, say, you know what? I love following you on LinkedIn or I like following you on Twitter because you serve up great content that I enjoy reading. And all I was doing was recurating other people's content, other magazines, other news periodicals, things like that, that I found. And when people started liking and commenting on it, I would just say, thank you. What'd you learn from it? And I, that's how I just started figuring out engaging in normal conversation. And it was just easy, right? It's no different. It's no different than you and I having a conversation face to face. There's just a screen behind it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's so good. And, and one of the things that I've talked about is that, Hey, nothing has changed. It's just different. If you are in a live event and you have nothing to say, nobody's going to talk to you. It, yeah. Uh, you know, right? a- absolutely. And, and, it, and it's so interesting. And I know you get asked this all the time, Brandon, so do I, right? How do you start conversations? Well, what do you do? I said, Hey, listen, and use, and just to peel back what you just said, I said, if, if you're, if, if I introduce you, Brandon, so it's you and I, right? And we're out in a social setting and I introduce you to one of my good buddies and I say, hey, Brandon, I want you to, you know, I'd like to for you to meet my buddy, Mike. You're going to probably shake his hand. Hey, how's it going? Pleasure to meet you. Drive a little bit of conversation with him. And you're not even going to think about it, right? And it's no different. And, and that's what I share with salespeople. Do you have any problem shaking somebody's hand in public and driving a little bit of conversation because that's the polite thing to do. No, I said, then what prevents you from doing it online? It's no different. Zero difference. The only thing is, is you're not shaking their hand. Yeah, you're digitally shaking their hand and you're digitally having a conversation with them. But they can tell when you're real and they can tell when you're human if you just drive and engage and mean what you say online. People will engage back. Yeah, exactly. Well, and that's a, I, one of the things that I say, and I'd love your opinion on it, is that um, social listening is actually just engagement, right? Social listening isn't the the offline version of listening. Online social listening, you actually have to actively yep. comment back to show that you were listening. No, I, I agree what because, you, you, you know, here, here's what's really interesting. And I test that all the time, Brandon, um, and not to be a jerk about it. But if some, but if so, you can tell if somebody comments on something, they really haven't read anything. They're just commenting yeah. on it, right? And then, <laughs> and then you expose them. But, you, yeah. you know, it, it, it's interesting. It just doesn't take, it, it just, even a simple thank you, even a, hey, great article, Brandon. I really enjoyed it, especially that sentence around whatever that topic is. It's not that difficult. It takes all of a minute, if, to really drive it. And, and, it, and it's crazy. The, you know, eh. I'll, I'll tell you something. This is, this is what just crawls underneath my skin. Can I share it? Yes, please. No, as long no, as you don't no, I, no, I <laughs> promised you I wouldn't. But it, it it's just it, it's just that you know if you if you read an article, if you read something, and I've done this with you, and you and I have done this back and forth with each other. If I read an article and I enjoy it, I'm going to comment on it. I think, man, right. I would I would really like to see the like come off of social because too many people just like right. Yeah. Hey, I like it which means they probably haven't read it. They just like it because it's going to scroll through a news feed. And that just royally pisses me off because that's not social. Right, right. Well, Larry, (laughs) we did not set this up, but I I have a blog article that, that is going out next week that says the like feature sucks. And, and the reason that I think it sucks is because Sales people, it doesn't even be salespeople. Anybody thinks that they actually did something by clicking like and you oh, didn't do anything. Yeah. Right? Doing something valuable 
is not clicking like. It's not, hey, I was here. I liked it. Woohoo. Which means, like you said, I didn't really read it. I just want to try and give you kudos. And I appreciate the heart behind it. But what's really intentional is click it, read a little bit, make a comment. Hey, Larry, I love that you shared it. I especially like this and how it relates back to your book or whatever it may be. That's engaging. And then the selfish part of that, I mean, let's talk, let's bring it all back around because this is about sales. It's about building relationships is now our relationship. If I do that, right, I click, I read, I write something intelligent, I tag you, our relationship yeah, no, in, is in, going um, to a deeper level. So I'll use, I got two responses to this. So first I want to touch on the like, and then I want to share an example. But, you know, this like thing is just really got to stop it. And here's where I'm going to relay this to, you know, personal. So I'm going to say you and I meet for the first time. Okay, Brandon. So I, I, you mm-hmm. know, our, we, but we, we walk into each other, right. Or something like that. We get introduced and I shake your hand and then I walk away. Right. What would you think about me? Right. right? You're going to go, dude, that guy's a complete, what just happened? Right. You know, Hey Brandon, right. how's it going? Shake your hand. Boom. Yeah. And I leave. I- there's no engagement, no nothing. That's similar to a like. And that, and that and that's my opinion. And people could disagree with me who are going to say, no, you know, a like is a head nod and a wave and all that. Well, great. But part of social is engaging. And if all you do every single day on social, whether that be LinkedIn, whether that be Instagram, whether that be Twitter, whatever social platform you happen to be on, if all you do is like, and you're insincere with your engagement, then get the heck off of social. It, it, yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm sorry I draw a hey. hard stance on that. But I, I think the reason why, uh, you know, I'll point back to my book. I think the reason why my book hit it real well is because I engaged my network. I engaged my network the yes. whole time. And when I started writing my book, I was dripping it out there and so forth. And you saw this is I was dripping my book out chapter by chapter and people were commenting on it and I was commenting back and I was humanizing me. And I think, Brandon, that's the missing link with this is, yeah, we live in a digital world. I do. I get yeah. it. I respect it. I grew up before the Internet, so I'm kind of dating myself on this. But it's still, and you and I have talked about this, it's building relationships and changing the way people think. And things haven't changed. The tools have changed. And you and I have had some healthy conversation around it. That's what I want people to realize, that in a world today that's digitally driven, we can still humanize what we do, leveraging the tools that we're given. What's happening is many people are dehumanizing themselves by using the tools they're given. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, hey, Larry, here's what I want to do. Would you mind coming back for another episode? Because I think we have a lot more to talk about. I like to keep these uh, episodes, you know, 18 to 23 minutes and we're just pushing that. So this has been really, really awesome. But can I ask you to come back for another one? I'm like, of course, of course, Brandon. (laughs) Excellent. Well, hey, everybody, here's here's what I want to say. Down in, the, down in the episode notes, I'm going to put information in there. I'm going to link to Larry's book because it's an awesome book. You need to read it. I'm going to link to his uh, podcast, which is Selling from the Heart also, because uh, you should be listening to that and, and hear what he has to say. And Larry, thank you so much for being with me today. And I appreciate that you're coming back. And so for everybody listening, this was a funnel amplified podcast with Mr. Larry Levine, the author of selling from the heart. And he promised me he's going to come back. So look for the next episode where Larry and I continue the conversation about how do we humanize this whole digital thing in order to build relationships that lead to increased sales. Thank you, everybody. Awesome. For being with I can't, us. I can't Larry, wait, Brandon. So we got, we got to nail this thing like right now. Yeah, that sounds great. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. We're going to see you next time on the Funnel Amplified podcast. Hey, Funnel Amplifiers. Thanks for listening. Did you know that we post new videos every day on our YouTube channel? Go to funnelamplified.com forward slash YouTube 
and subscribe so you won't miss out on our new content. Again, it's FunnelAmplified.com forward slash YouTube. Subscribe now and thanks again.